What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday, happy Friday. No, it's been a while. Had to redo this video a couple of times. My allergies kicking up and I'm sneezing all over the camera. So we're going to see if we can squeeze this in 10 minutes or less. So, today's video, we're going to talk about one of the things I get asked a lot. And I'm going to break it down in two-part series. One is going as a buyer to a card show. Is there a plan? Is there an attack method? You know, all of that stuff that you see floating out there with crazy thumbnails and titles and stuff. And then also, we'll go talk about going there as a seller. So we're going to hit a couple points here. I might hit a little bit on the seller stuff, but we're going to save that mostly for another video. And back to regular videos, guys. Um, just started back going into the office, so trying to get back in that rhythm. It's been a little bit chaotic and stuff. Um, you guys know I got a new roof on a house, the puppy, etc. That collection I picked up, uh, the last part of it, I'm about two thirds of the way through just sorting through it. So it takes a lot of time up when you start getting into stuff like that and videos kind of went in the back burner, but we're back. We're back. So today's video, we're going to talk about, um, me going as a buyer to a car show. Is there a plan of attack? Is, do I have a plan when I go to these car shows? No, I never have a plan. Because if I go there with a plan, like if I say, oh, I'm going to spend $500 or 1000 or 5000 this car show, then I'm expected to do that. I don't like putting anything like that on myself to go out there and do it. If I do happen to hit that with some kind of threshold, maybe I do make a catchy video out of it. But I don't go to buy just to buy. So there's no plan. I never have a plan at all. Um, like, I'm not going to sit there and say, I, there is somewhat of a plan, but there's not like a plan of how much I'm going to spend, what all I'm going to be doing there and stuff like that there. I, I routinely might just pop into shows and just, just to look around, browse, you know? Um, I forget what they, the people just go around looking at stuff. I mean, there's a catch name for it all, but I just like to go around looking. Never know what you'll find. All right. Second part is, or second point, Cash. Cash and cards. Some places I'll bring cards with me for maybe some trade bait. Maybe I'm looking to sell. You know, selling kind of hurts when you're selling it to somebody set up there because they're looking to pay probably seven, 60 to 80% on a card. I don't really do it. I might bring stuff, though, for some trade bait and some cash on this stuff. We'll bring cash. People ask how much. 500 to 5,000. And it depends on how big the show is. Um, for mostly like the 30 to 100 tables, I'd say 500 to 2 grand I'll bring. Uh, anything bigger like the Monster, one of the bigger Nashville ones, 5k would be my max going with. I mean, if I was going to Nashville, I'd bring a lot more money because that's a longer event. And at the same time frame, you know, I'm looking to find more rare cards. I know I'm going to have to spend more money on them. So make sure you guys, you know, for me, I bring some money. I set a limit, you know, hey, if a hundred dollars, yours, 50, 200, whatever it may be, you know, set yourself a limit, but don't look at like you have to spend that. That's the worst thing to do because then you're forcing yourself to buy stuff that you're not going to be happy with down the road. I'm telling you, honest opinion, I see it happen a million times where people just go to buy to buy. And that's where you'll wrap yourself into coming home and not being happy, find stuff wrong with cards. You start getting mad, depressed, all those mixed emotions. All right, third point, or third thing I look at. I know the show. So I will talk about two different shows. That Tomorrow I'm going to Louisville's uh, J&J All-Stars. And then next week it, I'm going as a seller in Lexington. But we're going to talk about if I was going as a buyer. So the two different areas. One thing I look at when I know in the show is who are my vendors that are going to be there? Who are the guys that are there pretty much monthly, bi-monthly, that I continually do deals with? I know their inventory. I don't have to sit there and look and know, do, ask a guy for a price, and he's 2X, 1.5X, and I'm just, like, wasting my time. So when I go there, I go there early, and I look for those guys, and I go through their stuff early, offer a price. We, you know, Sometimes I take it, sometimes we work on a price and stuff like that there. But normally, those are the guys I go to first. They get my first attention onto it. Then I'll walk the rest of the show, see who else is new, because there might be somebody else there. There might be other cards there that I want and stuff like that. But I always know my shows, um, know what to expect. Like the one in Louisville, I don't know what to expect tomorrow because sometimes there's four rows of tables. Sometimes there's six rows of tables. Sometimes there's three rows that are in full. So... 
I have to go there expecting I'm going to see three to four dealers. Um, hopefully, are there that I can you know get some cards from, to see whether it's great or trade or sell or whatever. The other thing is is that I know I'm going to the Lexington show again. If I was going as a buyer next week. I would know to expect from being there quite frequently, everybody's overpriced. They won't drop prices. It's like penny pinch mania, I call it down there. So if I, when I go as a seller, I know that if I bring value boxes and stuff that are good, they're going to fly. But like I said, when I go to Lexington, I don't ever expect to spend a lot of money. I think in four or five, six years now, probably closer to six, there's twice that I spent $1,000 there. Twice. I know that on a fact. <laughs> um, and that's because people came out of state with huge displays that I just was going through for stuff to grade. But like I say, know your shows, your usual vendors. That's that's what I look for mostly offhand. Number four, um, I see if I can find out if anybody's posted it's go it'll be seven at show, like on Instagram and stuff like that that I follow. Are they going to be there? Are they going to have any cards I may want? Because I may just go to them right off the bat. Or maybe I work that deal out ahead of time and just go to pick up the card. I try to make my time and travel worth it. Uh, I know there's a lot of shows I go to and just not worth it. It, it. You're going to have that. If you go to multiple shows and they're horrible, just keep going. Eventually you're going to start finding that show might turn around, go to a show you like, you find stuff. It, it happens all the time. But I try to look on people's social media cards they have. Hey, you bring this to the show, stuff like that there. Um, just so I could try to gauge some of the cards that are going to be there. Or just see it. Be like, hey, I might check these cards out. This guy's going to be set up type deal. The next thing I do is I'll try to plan meetups there with people. So if I'm going to Louisville and there's somebody driving down from Indy, maybe I have something we could work out trades, buys, or sales with while we're at the show. Um, that's just another piece that I've always done. Um, just, it's one of those easier things than us putting stuff in the mail. We can do the deals in person, look at the cards in person if they're raw versus graded and all that. It just makes it easier for all of us. And if we can't do it inside the show, we'll do it right outside parking lot in our cars, whatever it may be. You know, I know there's certain people now don't want, want you trading and selling amongst each other and all this stuff at shows I've heard. It's down in our area, but... You know, if it was, we'd do it in parking lot, go meet McDonald's, Denny's, I don't know, Waffle House, and we'll do a deal there. All right, last thing. I don't go to spend money just to spend money. I know we covered this to begin with. If you go there doing that, like you want to go spend two grand and you at like 500 and you walk the show, yeah, do a second look around. Maybe you miss something or maybe they pick something up from somebody. But just don't spend to spend. It's the wrong thing. Wait for the next show to come around and you have more money to go to it. You know, put the money in a, I call it the kitty pot. Um, basically, you know, money that I just put in a pot and when I go to shows, it's there. I add to it. Easiest way to say it. But I think a lot of people fall in those trends there to where they just spend to spend money. So, like I said, a lot of people always ask if we would do a little video on to it. Is there a plan for good old Extreme when he goes to card shows? Hell no. There's never really a plan. Um, if there is, it's because I'm going to meet up with somebody there and do some buy-sell trade. Or I'm looking at the show's venue and I know some of the dealers that possibly could be there. And I'm like, oh, I need to bring a little bit more money than normal with me. Because I'm if they have new inventory, I'm probably going to spend. But that's like the extent of my planning to go in here. Other than like, I need to get there by this time. I need to leave by this time. I can hit the post office type deal, stuff like that. I, I just really don't. I bring the camera with me and I come home and I edit footage for five or six hours. Like, uh, nobody wants to see this. Or this looks kind of cool. Put this in type deal. So um, for anybody that's out there that says they have a plan when they go to shows, I mean... You can sit there and say you're planning on going through value boxes and stuff like that there. But as far as, you know, spending tons of money and stuff like that, there isn't. You guys know I have a top 20 I do every year for um, cards I want to purchase. It's usually a carry forward list. That's always on my list when I go to these shows. But there's really nothing that I just set my sights on um, as goals like, 
oh, I must buy five Kenny Pickett autos today or five Kenny Pickett rookies or five T-Law rookies or five Jordan cards or anything like that. Because if I don't find it, it's a letdown for that show. And then you're like, next time, like, oh, I kind of want to go there. They didn't have nothing last time. But dealers rotate. They change around. There may have been dealers that couldn't make it because there was a show closer to them in Ohio or up in Indy that day that they went to. Next one, they're going to come down to this one. So just remember, um, inventory should hopefully change at each show. I know some tables don't. At the same time frame, dealers will change too. So you never know what you'll find shows, but I don't ever make a real big plan. And I know a lot of people have been asking me that now for the past year. Wanted to do a little video on the, pretty much what I look at when I'm going as a buyer. There's not much more playing than other than, hey, make sure I have money out of the ATM. The fuel tank's gassed up. Hit these vendors first. Link up with these dudes to get these deals done. And get footage for a video. Make sure the camera's charged up. That's about it. Pretty simple, huh? <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, I appreciate you guys to my welcome back video, kind of, um, from putting in those new hours at work, going and traveling back and forth. Give me a little less leeway left and right, you know, in the morning and the evenings to get stuff done. All right, that, guys. I'm out. Hopefully, Louisville shows good tomorrow. You guys catch a video of that probably Monday, I would say. And I think SGC comes in Monday, so we'll probably get a Tuesday or Wednesday video of that. Kind of cool stuff, too. All right, that, guys. I'm out. Take care. Have a good one. See you next one.